In this video, we're going to focus on creating something where we can create a clickable item here. You can see here, if we click the green bar, it will register, but if we click elsewhere, it doesn't. And this is very nice, but also a very complicated item. So let's start to explore how we can do this. And this is just purely Canvas. We're not going to work with Charge.js, but I want you to understand how Charge.js basically use the Canvas API to do what, it's, what we're trying to do consistently with Charge.js. In this video, we're going to continue on with the Canvas API, and we're going to focus on getting the mouse click position on the Canvas API. This is not a part here that I want to emphasize because I'm currently exploring how we can create a clickable scale, which is extremely hard to figure out. However, with this, I'm get, getting a bit closer anyway. But for now, I just want to show you exactly how we can do this with our code here. So we have this code here, and this is just Canvas. We're not using Charge.js at all here, just to note. Remember, this is from a previous video. If you don't have it, make sure you put, you watch the previous video first so you understand what we did. And I will put it in the comment section below. You can find that. So what we're going to do now is the focus. And this focus will be basically on this. There's a space in here. Focus will be now on can we make this bar clickable? Or for, for example, if I click on this bar here, would it indicate something? Would it be able to figure out if we click on this item here? So luckily it is possible, but for that we need to work with the uh, click event and we have to make a, uh, we need to get the coordinates. And you will see that this is also quite complicated. It's very, very interesting. The chart just make it very simple. If you want to know how to create a clickable uh, bar that will direct you to another website, I have a web video about it in charges, which is the code there is quite simplistic. It's very easy to do compared to what we're going to do right now because what we're doing here is basically from scratch. So what we're going to do here is first of all we're going to create a function and this function is to get I guess we can say get mouse position. And what I really want here is this I want to get here uh, the coordinates but what I want to do first is the canvas which is basically the canvas we're clicking on and the event which could be a click I guess we can say click or event doesn't matter. What we want to do then is when we do this, we're going to put in a command here. We say let and uh, rect equals the canvas, which is basically this canvas here. And you will see later on that this canvas is just this specific item or more specifically the canvas ID of my chart. So in here, we're going to say get bounding client rect, which basically uh, records it I guess so let's do a console log just to see what it really does because even for me this one is slightly confusing what exactly it does it should record it here if I click this it doesn't work all right oh we need to of course trigger it let's trigger this functionality first because what I eventually want to do here is get the x and y coordinates so what we're going to do here first of all we're going to say a ctx which is the reference of basically this one here on the my chart because we want to click now or we want to record the click on the chart here all right or this element here we don't want this here we don't want to draw anything yet we only want to record the click very important there's a big difference here so then we say here at event listener then we say here uh on click basically mouse down mouse down if that is the case then i want to get the event and then this event will be pushed into a function and this function will be called well very straightforward get this one and then here we say ctx the ctx is basically canvas and then comma e which is the event then the event is in our case click if you use a click again doesn't matter so if i save this now we should have now a connection in R. So what is happening is basically, it's, uh, I guess, what it does is it records everything regarding to the canvas itself. It records the size, the height, and the width, and I'm not sure if the bottom is 490. Uh, no, it's 300. So it probably what is rec uh, recording is the positioning itself within this item here or on the uh, screen. However, it doesn't matter too much. 
course, you're not planning to study this completely. For me, I do need to eventually study all this stuff because I need to customize certain things on the scale. Anyway, what is more important is basically this one you can see here and all of this here indicates exactly uh, all the information we have. We have the width, which is 300, which is correct, the height is 150, left, right, wherever we click on X and Y. So if I click here somewhere, it should be somewhere in the 300 by 150 plus. As you can see here, uh, let's go even more here. You can see here, we are now on, well, it should be 150, but it's it's completely different here because the height is only 150. So how this is working, uh, probably it is calculating something else as well, well, up and down here. Doesn't matter too much. Don't spend too much time on it for now. So what we're going to do here, basically what I want is the following. I want to get the item here, which is the X and Y. So we say here this equals, and let's look at this. We get this. But what I need here is the official value here. So that is probably why the value is so high here. What we need to do here is, well, let's look at this. That's this one here. Let's do console log, and I'm going to say here, event uh, oh well our event is not event it's a click so dot is a client x so if you do this we also do the other one which is the y value save this we click on that all right so we get everything here We're, however it is not the entire full thing but if i look here most likely as you can see here look at the tooltip of the chart 700 by 600 so probably here somewhere it's 400 plus so what we need to do here that that's exactly the positioning when you click on screen so it doesn't calculate here the default zero so what we need to do here that's this one and that's probably the reason why this one is so high as well if we do this um let's say here direct then dot left and the reason why, so we, we can calculate the difference and then eventually you want to deduct them from each other. And this one will be the rec dot top. If I save this, refresh, click on it, console log. All right, you get all the information here. And basically what it should be is this minus that will be equal to the official value. So what we're going to do now is uh, this one, let's go in here and let me say here the following. You say the, uh, there, where is that? The click, and there's a console log. This minus rectangular or rec left. So if I get this, we should now get the exact coordinates. So if I click on this, you can see it 26. If I go here more up or more to the left, almost at the beginning, it is only one. So that's correct. So if I go here almost to the end, you should see here. Well, let me just make sure you comment out anything else so it doesn't create any confusion so refresh and then you can see here if I go here there should be 300 and somewhere outside of the screen there you are and then here at the very beginning is zero but where exactly it is hard to click on it but that is the one we need so this will deduct it back to its original amount based on the item itself or on the canvas so this here is the y value and then of course based on top so if I save this, you can see here now, if we go up, somewhere here in the corner should be zero, zero. Beautiful. As you can see here, it does a little bit of weird stuff here, minus 150, but fair enough. I accept that, that little flaw. Fair. So now what we're going to do is, what I want to do here basically, because we have now the coordinates here, we can just say here, this. Well, we say your constant, uh, when you say, I guess, x equals that. And let me say here another constant, it will be the y equals that. So if I save that now, we now have our coordinates here. So let's remove all of this. We can remove all of this. And then what I want to do is the following. Well, what we can do here, just one more time, just for the sake of it, the x. Save this, refresh, you should see now, we click on, we get the x. So we also need the y, and these two together are very important. So we save this, refresh. Now you get both of them. Now what I want to do is this. So remember here, we created these bars here. And let's give this bar a unique a unique color. Let's make this, uh, I'm going to say this 255. Make it nice green. 
Ooh, that's too much, I guess. 155 will be fine. There you are. So we have this nice dark green color. What I want to do now is I want to get the coordinates on this. That if we click on this, at that moment we will say yes, we click on that. And that is basically how we create the linked uh, or basically the bar chart, the clickable bar charts. And this is one of them, and you can see here what we're doing here is quite complicated already. To do this, we need to calculate, and this is the if statement. We need to calculate these coordinates here and then compare them with our click on x and y. It's very simple because our starting point would be 25 and our ending point would be not 20, but 20 is the width of this one or the length of the width. So it's 25 plus 20 would be 45. So what I'm going to do here is just an if statement and this if statement would compare all of these items if we are within that range. Meaning, so let's say if x is larger than where than 25, because the starting point is 25, and we could say maybe even if this or larger or equal to 25, and x is smaller or equal to 25 plus 20, remember that, so that will be 45, and then I have another end. Because there's another condition, and y, now we have to call it the y value is larger or equal to how many pixels based on the y start. So if you look at y start, in this case y start is 20, so we can just we can grab this one for now. And if it is smaller or equal to that exact value, which is here, y start minus y height. I'm going to grab this, put it in here. So if that is the case, in this case, what I want to say here, console log, uh, we click the green bar, save this, refresh. Oh, all right, unexpected one, fair enough. Let's see, why is this unexpected? Am I missing something here? Am I doing it wrong? Or maybe this is just not allowed. All right, I'm just going to move this equal sign. Let's save this. Unexpected token here. I guess this is not the equal sign. I suspect this is the one here. We have this one, we have this value here. Does it work? No, it doesn't work. Unexpected token of that. Why? What am I missing here? Oh, sorry. I realize I'm, this is what I'm missing. We're missing a Y. So the Y equals this, and of course, the Y equals or is larger or equal to the starting Y value, and of course, here we miss the y, and the y should be smaller or equal to this. I'm not sure if we need to put this in parentheses, so let's see. There we are. So if I click on this, we click the green bar. If I click anywhere else, doesn't work. We click the green bar. All right, so let's console off this. Save that. There we are. So with this and this knowledge here, we can basically start to work on the skill to create clickable links on the scale. Of course, and this is the real of course, or the real challenge, do we, can we extract the uh, position of the scale? That's the only thing that I have to figure out. Once I figure that one out, we have clickable scales with links. Can't wait for that one because I'm trying to solve that one for a while. But that is basically here, the knowledge here. Oh, what I want to maybe say, final item. You can see this here. Maybe say, well, we don't like this here. You are probably familiar with the timing. If you've watched many of my other videos, I talk about timing here. Timing is basically when would you want to load a certain item. Charges have something very, very phenomenal, but you can say after or before data set, tooltip, or uh, anything else, whatever you want. Here, I'm sure that it, there might be somewhere possibility, but I do not know where. Here would be like this. You see these grid lines here. Uh, let's look here, these grid lines. And they are on top of the bars. Horrible. So we don't want them. We want the bars on top of the grid lines. So here, timing is basically based on the order we draw it. So we're going to move. These are basically the grid lines. Grid lines. And this here is our bars with color. Save that. There you are. And there you are. You can see now the grid lines are behind here. And of course, we could make this maybe a... A transparent color etc etc but for now i don't want to even work on borders because borders is also a quite tricky topic so this is basically how you can do a lot of items here and this is a nicer 
or it's a good introduction into the canvas. And I hope you truly appreciate ChartJS more once you understand how complicated this is.